I don't cry. I'm not going to cry. I don't, I'm not a crier. I'm not going to be surprised. There's nothing, nothing surprises me anymore, okay? I'm an empty vessel of a human being. It's an album, uh, is, is an al- Is it an album? It's unfinished, though. It's, huh. You didn't expect the streams to be so similar to YouTube vids? Me neither. I mean, I've only started recording stuff, uh, on streams recently. But it's actually been, it's been going really well, so. Just gonna get this started up. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music, and today I'm reacting to Hi, How Are You by Daniel Johnston. I don't know uh, jack shit about this album. I don't know who Daniel Johnston is, but I have seen this album cover. I know that this has been a highly recommended thing. Um, at least I believe so, and I got paid today to listen to it, so I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's jump into this. Pablo says, don't think you'll be a big fan, but this is one of my favorites. Daniel assumingly struggled with bipolar slash autism, and this album feels like an expression of depression through a child's eyes. Haunting, charming, cheap production, and soul-crushing lyrics. And the fact that it's 15 songs in 30 minutes, let me tell you right now, okay? I'm a fan of someone who can actually get something across really quickly, so that alone, I know, it's just going off of song lengths. It's not really the best way to judge something, but but if it's in a positive judgment, then people won't complain about it. You know what I'm saying? It's a big brain. Either way, sounds interesting. Let's give it a shot. First track, Poor You. All right. Yes, give me a second as I find this album. This album is from 1983. Wow. Damn, I didn't know they were making music in the early 80s. First song, Poor You. Poor You what? <laughs> it's not funny. All right. Hi. How are you? Every morning you got up. Just pause. I gotta do this. I gotta put down my notes. I'm just making something that's like a certain format so I can... No, I don't know why I make it so I have to type out the numbers every time. I could literally just turn this into one single copy and paste. It's quiet. It's probably gonna be a little quiet for you guys, but... Uh, it might get louder. He had to be awake. He looked at the floor for one gum wrapper. He never found a better way to go. Let me see if I can make this drier. Should be a little easier here. Here we go. Let's start. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Every morning he got up, dreading each moment he had to be awake. He looked at the floor for one gum wrapper. He never found a better way to joke around. The clock would tick and time went slow. There wasn't anywhere he wouldn't go to avoid having to see anyone. He'd sit in a chair, he'd lean against the wall, it just didn't seem to matter much at all. But late at night, he had a savior in his sleep, in his dreams. She came to him and she said, poor you, poor you, no one understands you, poor you, poor you. And every word that everyone would say got mumbled up in his head. Like mumble jumble and everywhere he went, it seemed everyone was saying to him, blah, blah, blah. But late at night, he had a mistress in his dreams, in his sleep. And she would say, poor you, poor you. No one understands you, poor you. For you, this story, though not well told, is not that old. It's not that funny, it's not that great, but I know it to be true. Because late at night, 
I have an angel in my dream, in my sleep. And as she runs her fingers through my hair, as I lay on the lap, and she says for you, for you, no one understands you, for you, for you. Oh, so, okay, so it's going to be one of these albums. Uh, one of these really sad albums that doesn't really work that well in the traditional form of rating and reviewing is... I mean, I, I, I what do I even say? I, I'm going to abstain right now from personally giving scores uh, until I feel like this album becomes a little bit clearer for me. Uh, next song, Big Business Monkey. say the writing's fantastic but it's also really blunt sad and uh, a little difficult to follow along with uh, not because it's poorly written and it is like easy to follow along with it's just it's rough um yeah for poor you i guess for big business monkey this feels a little bit more uh, traditional i guess you could still say but still really stripped back and uh and empty There seems to be a really strong flow with this album, so I, I want to take as little time as, like, take as little time as possible with uh, with discussing each one of these tracks while still covering it. Um, Big Business Monkey is a really simple track. It's about a businessman who basically cares for money over anything else and how that will uh, essentially mean nothing in life. And I think it's done perfectly. If you're going to strip it back, strip everything back, including the writing, it does that. It's really cute. It's a great tune, and I think it also puts some perspective to the first song, and I'm safe with saying both these songs for me are Smiley Ball. Um, this is a great start to this album. It feels like it has a really interesting artistic direction, and I'm curious to continue. Next song, Walking the Cow. The other thing I wanted to mention is that last song uh, ha reminded me a lot of the Velvet Underground. What's up, David? Lucky 
So, some people don't fully understand this. I am doing this live. Um, I, the best way that I could explain this is this, to me, feels like psychedelic lo-fi. Like, as lo-fi as possible, there's something that you just kind of get lost into uh, with this project, with it being so stripped back. I think that's one of the things that makes it easy to fall into it for me. Um, it's kind of comforting while also feeling uh, down, depressed. It's just a really... Yeah, it's just a style that it's going for. That I've never heard anything this lo-fi and stripped back before. So this is kind of a first for me. But I, immediately I see the appeal as these songs still have catchy uh, pieces, just like any other track, um, just doing it in its own unique way. <laughs> Jim Jams, Jesus. The note choices are smart. Yeah, no, this, the music, like the composition, makes a lot of sense. One sec, guys. I, I need a second. So usually I would like leave the camera on. It would be fine if I was like talking to my mother. Yeah, I, I don't think you guys realize, all right? Saying your social security number and phone number while you're streaming and you have a camera on you and there's recording the microphone. I was looking to see if it was muted the entire time. I made sure to turn off my camera. Uh, homie, okay, that's like having a gun pointed to your head. All right, that shit is terrifying. That is terrifying, okay? You heard it? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. That's why, that's why I saw dolphins and not, you know, anything else. 
But yeah, <laughs> it was terrifying. Oh, yeah, she's just like, all right, I need your social security number. I was like, it's muted. Camera's off. Why not leave the room? Because, I mean, I'm here, <laughs> you know? I don't want to get up. Anyways. Sounds like how watching old Cartoon Network shows used to feel. Are my legs broken? Yes. Sounds like a great album to fall asleep to. There are actually pieces of this uh, this that sound like ASMR, especially the uh, the clicking or, or the the tapping sounds of the drums. Very reminiscent to me of uh, of that kind of sonic stimulation. electric piano he's playing and he's making a tap sound. If car seat headrest is lo-fi, then what's this? It's low lo-fi. Whether or not it's him, uh, like, the thing is, is him tapping the, the keyboard still makes it sound like drums and works effectively in this track. A lot of people would do something like this, going for this aesthetic, and they would fail miserably at it because they don't know how to make an actual good song underneath the umbrella of this kind of song. Or, or this kind of style, I should say. Um, and that's why I like this, because I think it does it justice. I think the lo-fi sound is great, and there's also a really sweet tune underneath it. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. It's a simple little melody that goes perfectly with this track. Any thoughts on the quality of lo-fi? The only lo-fi I have a problem with is like lo-fi hip-hop beats. Okay, that's a load of bullshit right there is what that is, okay? That is uh, the quickest money-making scheme in the book. Love what I'm hearing so far. I'm going to give that song a smiley ball. Walking uh, the Cow, I think, so far is... I, I don't necessarily say the opus of this project. Poor You starting off uh, very stripped back as an intro. Funny enough, actually feels like an appropriate way of starting it off, though it does seem a, a little slow. And on returning to this album, I might skip that song to get to something like Big Business Monkey. Um, regardless, though, uh, there's still something very soft about this project that I'm enjoying so far. I picture myself with a guitar. Next track. Yeah, dynamic it is. You can't watch ASMR videos. They make you uncomfortable. I'll show you guys. There's one channel that's like... Yeah, here it is. What's going on? What's going on? This guy. See, if you're not into ASMR, then I highly recommend uh, checking out ASMR Rich. This is one of the only people that, that ASMR can ever work for, okay? All right. Uh, ASMR insane rocket launcher sounds, insane gun sounds for sleep. Uh, <laughs> new insane gun sounds. <laughs> this guy is great, though. Uh, we love him, uh, me and Tina, but... I just think that this is like the greatest gimmick ever. <laughs> that's, that's how you do it. That's the ultimate uh, goal right there. I 
I'm actually going to restart this song. I was super distracted the entire time. I also feel like it kills the flow uh, with, with being distracted for such a short song. Okay, walking the cow, uh, I picture myself with the guitar and despair come knocking, come together really nicely, and that's kind of what I'm judging. I picture myself with the guitar as, as I don't think it really works as its own track on its own, and I give the song a shrug, though I think in context of the album, uh, I'm perfectly fine with it. So, that being said, I, I still think it works in the project, and it doesn't really take away any enjoyment. Uh, next song, Despair Came Knocking. <laughs> Was that Lavender Town? I'm really impressed with the melodies on this project. I'm not surprised that this is a popular or, you know, well-liked album at all. You know, this is one of those styles that would easily, you know, scare people away, but the songs behind them are really solid and it allows you to kind of open your mind to what's happening here uh, instead of it kind of scaring you away and you having to come back and force yourself to listen to it. It's just soft, sweet, and inviting while doing something so stripped back. <laughs> Not bad, not always, but if it's an interesting album. Yeah, I'd say this borders into uh, field recording territory almost. Um, yeah, I love the sound of that track. I also think the fact that these songs are once again super simple is is very deceptive, uh, as the quality of these songs are not uh, like like there's just something still really heavy beneath the surface of each of these. Um, yeah, I like it. Smiley Ball, really good song. Continues the album nicely for me. Next song, I'm a baby in my universe.
Does this album qualify as sadcore? I don't really know the qualifications. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's too far off. me hating desperate man's uh desperate man blues i'm gonna be honest i don't even know what that song is but i have a feeling that with the context of everything i've heard so far i'm not really going to hate that so you know i mean i think context timing and especially for something as stripped back and strange as this is like things a lot of factors matter plus i didn't know it came out in 1983 which for something like this like if i thought this came out yesterday i'm gonna be honest if you do this shit all right in the year 2020 i'm sorry but it, it's not as charming or effective as if you do this in the early 80s. Let's be honest here, okay? It really does matter. Like, like if you try to do this in the year 2020, you're going to end up with a Hawaii Part 2 instead of this. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm a Baby is not my favorite track here. I'd give it a shrug. Um, still cute. Works. Song makes sense, but not a favorite. Singing's a little annoying, but it makes sense in the song and might grow on me. Next song, uh, I'm just going to run through these since it's three songs in a row that are super short. There's Nervous Love, 18 seconds long. I'll Never Marry, 20 seconds long. And Get Yourself Together, 32 seconds long. And I'll just talk about them all after they're done. interesting how doing something like this actually works better when it's unfinished as i feel like an entire song like that would not really work um, but in small pieces it's hard to hate i don't think these songs really work on their own or even in a line do they feel very cohesive um i give it a shrug personally but i i, I get what it's trying to do I, once again i feel like this is one of those albums that on revisiting is going to kind of show me a lot more as the flow really does matter but it's still emotionally impactful just as songs, you know what I mean? It's, it's it. You know, like, there's, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Have you heard the album Kurt, uh, Kurt Cobain's montage of the Heck home recordings? I've heard the sample that Kid Cudi used from that, but that's, that's about it. Next song, Running Water. Actually, uh, I should score these tracks. Running water, running water, where are you running from? <laughs> 
That's a good one. Cause it's, because the water is running. You better catch it. <laughs> That's a good one. Not yet returns. Why are you running? Good lo fi. I'm in a better mood. No, I was in a shit mood today. Like, I was feeling horrible this morning. I had a really bad day yesterday. But then I recorded a video, which I which I've been struggling to do for a long time. And that's it always makes me feel better because I feel bad because I, I, I feel like I don't have the strength to get up and record. But I did that today, and that helped me a lot. So I'm really happy I did that. So these last, uh, the, the last handful of tracks here has really done nothing for me because I feel like what, what really connected me th with me were the sweet melodies that I feel like have just been kind of traded off um, for really raw, depressive, uh, empty tracks, which again, is what they're supposed to be. I won't take it away from them, but they're just not super enjoyable. It's one of those things that you can kind of witness from a distance, um, but I'm still just struggling to pull like tracks out of these. So for me, that song is a shrug, but still, I'm intrigued. I'm interested in where it goes from here. Next song, Desperate Man Blues. I think the end of the world is coming. guys also need to understand is like from tracks i'm a baby and running water it has literally been a total of about four minutes of music like like four minutes have passed all of those tracks so as much as it feels like it fell off the bandwagon almost no time has passed so that's also something to understand here is there, there really is a level of scale here to consider that this if you don't like what you just heard like it's a fraction of what you've been hearing Does this sound like any other music you've listened to, Brad? Uh, I know I've made, you've made a lot of comparisons in your ab, uh, in Absentini review. Yes, it does. First of all, like just the very depressive writing, very straightforward writing. I'm not sure where I feel like I've heard this before. Fuck, I actually have no idea. It's just, it's super depressed. I feel like a lot of people who talk about depression kind of go through the exact same stages of feeling like things are going nowhere, uh, self-doubts, talking down on themselves. Um, but I will say the sound really reminds me of this great artist named Joe Holly, who has this album called Miracle Musical. Okay, all jokes aside, though, um, no, the sound doesn't sound like anything I've heard before. Not this strip back. It sounds a little bit like Velvet Underground in the very beginning, but I feel like it's kind of lost that. And, and it's so stripped back. It's so uh, weirdly under a lot of effects. Uh, yeah. That's, that's about all I got. I like this. It sounds like a, a 50s television broadcast. It also has a little bit of swing to it, too, to, to add to that. Like 
You feel bad today and this is making it worse? I mean, yeah, it's it's existential for sure, but just try not to take it too much to heart, you know? Like, most people with mental illness are faking it. Now, I'd say 99% of people with mental illness just make it up so that other people, um, so that they, they get sympathy from other people. It's true. It's actually true. So just, you know, that that should ease you a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually facts. Yes, ninety nine point nine percent. I'd even say. Okay, demon dice. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm joking. I hope you guys understand. I know I said that with like a, a very serious voice, but it's a joke. Okay, like I'm. You know me. I'm. No. <laughs> Brad, I know this is a meme, but it might not be a good idea to say it all. I, I, yeah, you're probably right. It's not that I, I see also from the reception. I will say maybe that was not, uh, like the best territory to go to, but just know I, look, I've, like the last few days have been hell for me, you know? Me saying that is just also a way of coping with that too, so, you know, I'm not just making a joke at your guys' expense. I'm kind of joking to, you know, for myself too. So, all right. Maybe something will come along and make me I've made a continuous happy. severe lapse of judgment. Happy. There ain't no fun in living anymore. And I don't feel much like living. Can't see what's for. There ain't no life left in me. I feel a bit funny, like a go -o -o with nowhere to go. Oh, my hope has gone and left me a desperate man. There's no funk left in me. I feel so hollow in me. It's honestly the hardest song to listen to of this entire album. They're really putting their depression on display here. It's really ugly and you can't really look away from it. So Desperate Man Blues is significantly more complete than like any of the previous tracks, and I really like it for that. Uh, I feel like this is the most chilling track. I'd say that it's my favorite track of this album that I don't ever want to come back to. I'd give it a smiley ball. That really shook me to the core and uh, felt a little too real for comfort. Really fucked up. Next song, Hey Joe. actually name their kid Jude anymore? That feels like a dead name. It's 
something I said earlier with this album being as straightforward as it is, is kind of biting me in the ass at this last half as because it's so straightforward and potent. By the time it gets to these really depressing songs here, you just feel all of it with like no filter and it's really hard to swallow. expect this to affect me as much and make you cry <laughs> look at you with the, see I haven't cried you know because I keep all my feelings inward you know <clears throat> yeah I, I, I don't cry <laughs> What's funny is what I'm doing is literally like what this song is about, which is why also this song is so fucking painful. The whole like feeling like you can't talk to people about it because they just don't understand the weight of what's actually happening. Yeah, that's really, um, that's painful. It's a real stab to the chest. And you know what? I will admit, I'm man enough to admit, uh, sometimes laughter, you know, after laughter comes the tears, right? Like, I'm, I'm joking to try to just cope with the fact that this is so fucking sad, dude. I know it's a lot more than just being poor. Hey, Jordan, do your chores. Don't feel so There's a heaven in. Honestly, didn't think it would be painful. No, it is. <laughs> no, Pablo, you're good. You're good. I'm having a great time with this album, and, I mean, hopefully you can notice that, like, I'm, 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 I'm holding myself together really well. Like, I am still appreciating it for the art. Uh, there, there's a huge difference between being uh, completely emotionally crushed by something and impacted to the point of, like, being able to uh, no longer function from it. I, I feel like I just understand this album, and that's kind of a crushing, powerful experience. And I would definitely have preferred you sending me this over something that didn't touch me in the way that this has. Are you? I've been on hold for hours. I'm getting tired of this music. Thank you, Garfism. Yeah, wow. Um, so, Desperate Man Blues was uh, was a hard listen. Hey Joe is like a, a second helping of horrific gut punches. One of my favorites of this album, Smiley Ball. Um, the piano really stabbed me in the throat as well. This whole song just feels like, like just being emotionally wrenched out and exhausted. Like, you feel it from the singer and you feel it, you just feel it. It's 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 unavoidable, man. Fuck. That one really stung. That that was one of my favorites here. I'm gonna give it a heart though. I don't know how many times I could listen to that shit again. Next song she called pest control. She called pest control. And when she was gray, 
He never was bothered again. She wore western style boots, foreshadowing things to come. I said, I'm an artist in search of a medium. He said, I know. And I said, well, I gotta go. Looking back over my shoulder to see if he was sorry I was leaving. Because I thought I was lying. But I was going. I was going. I was gone. She called pest control. And when she was sprayed, she never was bothered again. She called pest control, even though it's just a little spoken word segment here, I think works pretty well after the really powerful tracks that we just went through. Working as a, a really solid uh, transitional moment. Be, excuse me, I'll be back in about one second. Okay, don't don't actually be doing anything stupid. smoking on all right i'm back keep punching joe what did joe do ladies and gentlemen he headed out west looking for the best and he's here tonight he says he's got a lot to get off his chest Is that Jack Stubb right here? I've been singing the blues and walking the cow. And tell you my soul's like wanting water, hot or cold, now one or the other. I guess I lean towards the excessive. But that's just the way it is when you're a manic depressive. An angel appeared to me and told me if you want love, you gotta give. Let me tell you now, it's been a long, hard summer. And I feel every bit, every bit more dumber. Don't know where it is I'm gonna go. Heard someone say, keep punching Joe. Keep punching Joe. Keep punching Joe. Keep punching style keep or pest control. Ah, oh, now let me tell you about my family. You know they've been right there beside me. Through all this time that I've been low, they've been punching Joe. Keep punching Joe. Kick him right in the face. Keep punching Joe. Kick him when he's down. Keep punching Joe. Kick him, kick him when he's low. I got some things to get off my chest. Well, I got some things to get off my chest. Yes, I've got some things to get off my chest. How am I supposed to give up? Yeah, all my standouts I gave parts to pretty much. I never got love. And what the heck am I punching for? And how am I to look God in the face? When I feel so much disgrace Now that's better off my chest Than out of my mind Keep punching Joe Whoa! 
Damn. That was uh, one of the best Hobo Johnson songs I've ever heard. Oh, I'm sorry. Daniel Johnston songs I've ever heard. Smiley Ball. But actually, though, yeah, no. You See, that's the thing is people think, you know, depression, you got to be sad all the time. No, there's... This, this is really showing another side of uh, truly feeling defeated uh, with real human emotions attached to it and is somehow even more terrifying uh, than some of the more somber cuts here. Uh, keep Punching Joe, of course, talking about, you know, they're telling him to keep punching, um, but they're also telling, like, others to keep punching him and kicking him while he's down. Um, yeah, really fucked up. Final song of this album, No More Pushing Joe. Uh-oh. All the other kids with the pumped up kicks, question mark? I was about to say it's like the opposite of AJR. Oh, oh, 
uh oh. Oh, he took it all back, so he's going back through his tracks. Okay, wow, that actually spiked my anxiety. Oh my god. Oh, that's really... That's really fucked. Hi, how are you? If you showed me one song here, uh, just any one of these songs out of with, with no context, I would say, yeah, this thing sucks. Sounds like it was recorded in a toaster oven. However, the full context of this project actually makes this thing uh, really striking. From the moment it starts to the moment it ends, this feels like a very full experience. And even though I wasn't in love with every individual moment, there was never really a moment where I could say that it completely killed the momentum for me, as I was always interested in what was going to happen next. It shows the biggest strength of this project being Daniel Johnston, the fact that he's able to carry this uh, entire lo-fi project on his own with uh, his own extremely depressing thoughts, um, creates a really amazing piece of art. Yeah, I think he did an amazing job here. Um, I really enjoyed this project. I'm not really fully sure what I would score it, but if I was to give it a score right now, I'd probably say uh, it's a 7 plus to an 8 minus overall with, with how I'm feeling from this. But yeah, I, I think this is a great project. I'm not sure how quickly how quickly I will be uh, returning to this, but I will be giving it another listen, and if I have any updated thoughts, I'll let you guys know about this. Um, by the way, that final song is a smiley ball. I completely just realized I forgot to say that. Um, yeah, I feel like this album ended extremely strong with uh, possibly just a, a run of like the best songs here, like four of them here at the very end. Desperate Man Blues, Hey Joe, Keep Punching Do Joe, No More Pushing Joe Around. Um, yeah, this this whole mo this whole moment of this album was honestly the most crushing for me. Um, yep, really incredible project. I really appreciate you, Pablo, uh, for sending this one in. I'm going to check it out again and see see if anything grows on me and hopefully make a video out of this. All right, guys, uh, and I'm not talking to the chat when I do this. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, peace out. Stay safe, and I'll see you around. All right.